Hello, hello, and welcome back to Password. Not Password, Minotaur Hotel. Fuck you, I didn't, I didn't fuck up. You, whatever. The two of you uh, return to the hotel's lobby. The spiral staircase, now tinted orange by the skylight, remaining, <laughs> remains as welcoming as before. The fourth floor has no doors, however. Here, this floor is dedicated to the master and those he allows in. The hotel bends to the master's will. Wish for a door, and it will be done. My power is similar to yours, albeit much weaker. I can't believe I'm going to start a video and blow my nose. But you know what? I am. I don't know. My nose has been a bit stuffy lately. <sighs> I hope you like the ASMR. In due time, the hotel shall conform, conform for the ground up to your vision. It barely requires you to focus. Uh, just a passing thought is enough to make a hotel flicker in and out of reality. The door welcomes you. It flickers away after you and... Uh, Asteron closed its cross its threshold. The living room ahead of you seems to have uh, resisted the damage of time better than the rest of the hotel. It is dusty, <clears throat> and some clumps of the and chunks of the wall show the beginning of mold, but that is uh, nothing compared to the devastation you saw in the kitchen. Asteron says nothing at first. His gaze seems to be lost in the distance. As he, <clears throat> as he walks around inspecting the room, there are lines of wooden carvings on the shelves. During the Minotaur's silence, you take the chance to explore, explore it yourself. The living room is a sprawling lounge made, made to um, receive guests. That's what it is, uh, both it in great number and for intimate get-togethers. Under the uh, suns sunset's light, the wooden floor colors uh, colors uh, the room with a soft, warm hue. There's a matter, there's a uh, master bedroom with a vast closet still filled with clothes, none you'd use. However, it's a wardrobe pulled straight out of the '30s, organized with a tireless devotion. There's a large office, the kind you'd expect from uh, from an important executive. Uh, sitting on the desk is a selection of finely decorated fo uh, fountain pens and a stash of, de of documents. For the most part, written in a, a delicate calligraphy. Most of the documents are signed by Master Jean, although a handful bear a, an illegal scribble for a signature. There's a um, finely furnished bathroom off to the ti uh, off to a. Um, tight hallway to the side of the living room. At the end of the corridor, after a sharp turn, there's a crumpled, a cramped windowless chamber. It has a handful of remnants of the uh, living room's warmth, albeit muted. The windows, uh, the, the wood's color is faded. The ceiling is uh, metri, me meter? I don't know what this word is. Med or lower. That just seems weird to me. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Um, Met tree. That's the word. Meter. Why is it spelled that way? Meter. I know what a meter is. But I've never seen it spelled like that. It said it was the British way of spelling it, so like, okay. But like, I'm sorry, I live in Burgerland, so <laughs> I I don't. Uh, <clears throat> there is little to no furniture. There is, however, an os oster bed that looks larger than your typical single. Besides. Uh, beside it is a tiny chest of drawers with a handful of dusty potter poetry books piled up 
and piled on top alongside more wooden ca car carvings. This room affords privacy, but little else. Astron is going over it when you're when you arrive. He cradles every wooden carving in the room. Okay. Examining them one by one, most of the carvings depicted bulls. He opens one of the books, and the page marker falls from it. He looks down at it, but doesn't bother picking it up. The Minotaur opens a small closet off to the side, and, and takes out what seems to be a long piece of fabric. He smells it. Or perhaps hugs it to his chest. His, um, bony... His bony, uh, snout leaving a stain of blood and dust on it. He sighs and shudders, the Minotaur looking back to you, acknowledging your presence for the first time since arriving here. I am frightfully sorry I was lost in thought. This floor is the master's quarter. It, uh, contains your bedroom, office, living room, and any other installations you wish to add. This room we are in, this was my bedroom. I serve the hotel, but above all else, I serve the master. It is uh, often considerate, uh, considered uh, convenient to have me around, as I, uh, as I can cook and help the master however he sees fit. Uh, there are masters. There were masters who had children, for instance. Instance, I would insist to attend to their to to them, providing entertainment and play while their master rested. Master Jean was a man of culture. He enjoyed having me play my lyre for him at night. The Minotaur's gaze wanders away, wanders away again. His hands caress a wooden carving. The wine should be in the kitchen. The two of you go there. This time, there's no purple stain on the floor or glass shatters thrown about. The empty bottle is gingerly placed on the counter beside the sink. Astron sinks down again. At least he did not damage Master Jean's carvings. Was that the last bottle? No. I have one last bottle, bottle stashed away, and I'm sure it must be intact. There's no way he learned about that one. It's all the way downstairs. All the way? About 30 floors down, yes. Worry not, Master. It's getting late already. I can prepare you a proper meal and dust off your quarters. You may rest for the night. I shall deal with this affair after you've gone to sleep. No, I can't let you do that. You're in no state to go up and down 30 flights of stairs. Tell me where to find the bottle. While I go down there, you can check over the quarters. If you want to go over the previous master's belongings... For a single moment, uh, you see Astron looking looking off to the side, pondering before uh, giving, his, uh, giving his response. Very well, I obey. The 25th, uh, the 25th underground floor is uh, much like this one, without doors. You may command the hotel to reveal the way. It's where we've uh, stored things over the centuries. All the way down the corridor, there's a wall painting. The bottle should be in front of it. You answer with a thumbs up as you summon a door out. Once more, you've enveloped by sunlight, draping from the skylight. Your echoing footsteps <clears throat> have a uh, sun, sunnery to them, a twinge of life in this abandoned hotel. Once you reach the ground floor, however, your path becomes uh, darker. Your footsteps now sound shy in front of an oppressive veil. The 25th floor cannot come soon enough. A plague of the featureless wall greets you. The door flickers in front of you with a small eagerness, similar eagerness. The hallway extends far into the distance. It slides, its sides uh, lined with some sort of objects. Armor sets, furniture, statues, uh, treasure chests full of trinkets from all ages. I'm looking for the wine bottle. As you reach the A corridor's end, the object takes the objects take a sharp turn to what you'd expect from a museum of on ancient Greece. 
there's the wall painting Asteron told you about. Right in front of it is see is a sealed wine bottle. It is covered in dust. Its label is faded. You obtained a wine bottle. Off to the side, there's a glass case containing a jagged purple rock and the uh, vague shape of a double-headed axe head. It drips uh, an oily, uh, dark red liquid down the case. The goo was pooled on the case's bottom, wafting an unpleasant, bloody stench. The case is locked but an old, by an old padlock. You got what you came for. You make your way back upstairs. The setting sun, the setting sun's orange tone, uh, tones color the uh, entire apartment. It turns the suspended, yeah, suspended dust in the air into thousands of sparkling diamonds. The previous master's carvings stare at you, wide-eyed and beckoning you further into the corner quarters. The smell of old dust seems so small compared to how sweaty the room... Sweetly, the room welcomes you. Not sweaty. Huh. Uh, if a place could ever be alive, and if it could ever be naked, this is it. The hotel itself embraces you, its intimacy laid bare. Nothing moves, and Astron is nowhere to be seen. Silence reigns, uh, save for a faint hum of life. You, sl you leave the wine bottle on the living room table. You dwell deeper into your quarters, and the hum grows louder and sharper. It's life. It's like a breathing, ragged and paint pained. The dust, um, <clears throat> visible under the sunlight shudders. The sound is coming from the office. Astron's uh, standing over the desk, his back to you, sobbing. Your footsteps are not enough to uh, make him aware of your presence. The Minotaur sobs again and again, each one uh, coming from deeper inside of him. They begin meek. Hardly more than a snort, but he lays, but he lays his hands on the desk and curls forward, his vibrate uh, vertebrae just sharply from his uh, deadly thin skin, made more obvious by how he hunched over. He spat out a sob from the depths of his lungs. The dam bursts. His uh. He breaks into waves after wave of grunts and half-muted screams. He pressed his face against the desk and clawed at it, leaving his marks in the pristine wood until the <clears throat> until he falls to the ground, curled up like a child. He sees you there. He sees you then, with his uh, tear-drenched eyes and and ignoring your presence, master or not, you are too small. He curls further into himself mouth covered by his hand as he lets out another muffled yell. The Minotaur's voice breaks mid midway, th <clears throat> midway through, and he goes silent, even if his mouth is still locked in agony. But Astron looks up to you, aware of your presence, and makes no effort to hide or cower. In fact, he tries to speak, but you cannot understand his slurred words, only that his voice has a tone of welcoming comfort him. You cross the uh, gap separating the two of you one step at a time. Astron's eyes does not avert from you. You sit by his side, back to the desk, and only then his gaze drops down to the floor into further sobbing. You drape an arm over his shoulder and pull him to you. The Minotaur doubles down on, doubles down on his crying, now muffled by your shirt. His fingers dig into you. They'd hurt, but he's uh, not so em 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 emaciated. You rub the back of his head and let the minotaur down uh, at his own pace. As the sun sets further, darkening the room, his crying grows quieter and more discreet as well. When all is... Uh, uh, when all is uh, dark except for the stars shining beyond the window, Astron's hands relax and he slouches fully onto your chest. He almost seems to be asleep, but you catch his eye looking up at you. Astron's 
uh, pacified, but you give him a few moments, a few more minutes to make sure. His fingers dig at you one last time, right at, right as uh, he sighs. You pat him on the back and help him up. He says nothing about what happened, what he just happened, but accepts your hand. And when you leave the office, he stays close by your side. But in the living room, you guide Astron to the st- to the sofa. He stirs without questioning, but accompanies you with his gaze as you open the wi- the wine bottle and bring it over to him. You just it was right where you said it would be. Astron caresses the bottle. Thank you. Cheers. Astron foregoes using a glass entirely. He leans his head to the side, and uh, so the wine doesn't drip from the exposed uh, 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 jawbone, and drinks straight from the bottle. He savors the first gulp. He sighs, leaning his head back, and lets out a groan as his entire body sort of relaxes. And then he returns to, returns to the bottle, this time drinking it earnest. From the uh, corner of his eye, he looks at you. The tinge of shame spreads on his face as a drop or two of wine uh, drip from his exposed jaw. It doesn't take uh, long before his arm starts shaking, however. For this uh, emaciated uh, musculature, musculature uh, holding the position for so for for long is a challenge. You stand up and help him uh, hold the bottle. It's like a bottle feeding a calf. Astron looks up with uh, uh, looks up to you with a sharpened gaze. He does not reject your help, but his brow from, uh, frowns, <laughs> and he uh, and his eyes locks onto you in particular. Barely a minute passes before he seizes the bottle and goes back to holding it himself. He wastes no time and drinks the entire contents of the bottle without stopping, going so far as to shake the bottle to get the last drops. Astron leans back onto the sofa, a half-smile uh, painted on his face. Uh, thank you so much for the wine, Master. Uh, I feel better already. Uh, it won't be long before uh, it takes it starts taking effect. Don't mention it. It was, um, it was nothing. Is that so, master? Is that so, master? Uh, if it is not, uh, Im- impertinent, Im- impertinent of me, would you, uh, answer a few questions? Sure. I don't see how that could be a problem. I wish to know about the war. How did it end? War? Which war? The Second World War. The conflict between allies and the Axis. France was occupied. How did it end? Does France still exist? Yes, it does. France is doing fine. The Allies won the war. A lot of stuff happened since then. You briefly tell his, <clears throat> tell him uh, France's history after the Second War, especially the uh, aftermath of the war. Oh, I'm so relieved to hear that. I've spent all these years locked away thinking about it. Master Jean talked about many times. To- uh, talked so many times about France. Paris this and that. But also about the countryside. The fields of lavender. The fragrance of vineyards. All sorts of wine. Master Jean would, uh, could never go a meal without a glass. He grew up in a village uh, near um, Bordeaux. <laughs> I don't know how that word is, I'm sorry. Yes. He always said this village, his village's wine was the best, period. Master Jean fought in the Great War, too. He found his way to the hotel as a guest himself, a shell-shocked young man fresh off the battlefield. He inherited the deed from the previous master, and he ruled over the hotel was a sight to behold. He was very kind, had a preference for bringing in victims of war. It wasn't easy caring for so many amputees and shell-shocked men, but it was worth it. He loved it here, but I suppose he loved France the most. I couldn't dissuade him from returning home to liberate his country. 
he died in 1944. I, th I felt it right when it happened. Felt the bullets going through my head in the middle of the night. One week later, the new master arrived, and Jean left a will, giving the hotel's deed to his brother, Master Clement. Clement wasn't bad at first. He was very eager to please, to be of use to the guests, but there was something in him. Agreed, I suppose. To merely be like, to merely be liked wasn't enough, you see. He and uh, Master Jean differed greatly. Jean had a vision to bring comfort to those affected by war. Clement, on the other hand, didn't want to be liked, but warships. He had his eyes on the guest, a woman who led his, uh, held his mind in a palm of her hand. Ah, well, you know, liking a woman, terrible. I can only believe it went badly, and so he, well, you saw what he did to me. The guests are gone, and the hotel has been left to rot. I had uh, glimpsed the beginning of madness in your eyes. I am no fool. It was clear he was no sane man, but I hope he'd be harmless. Uh, I believe I met this Clement you speak of. I believe I met this Clement you speak of. He gave me the hotel's deed, uh, talked a bit about himself, uh, said he squandered his one chance at something good. He's senile now, can barely talk right. He was looking for someone to take over the place because none of his kids would do it. When I checked the deed, it was all se it all seemed like gibberish to me. I could only uh, believe he was he wasn't thinking right and gave me some used napkin. He said he had done bad stuff during his life, but I never imagined it was as bad as what I saw here. Uh, Asteron's brow furrowed, and his eyes wandered. He twiddled uh, his thumbs while you speak. He's still alive, then. He closes his eyes, wrinkling his uh, visage in anger. Astron looks up to the ceiling. His voice is, is uh, relaxed now, almost soothing. <laughs> Excuse me. But it carried a uh, spike of so... Uh, so... so Soberty? Master, if once again you would accept it, may I ask a question? This one, however, may be out of place for me as a keeper. Can we have sex? Uh, y you give him permission. The labyrinth was created to torture me as punishment for my crime. But over the years, the human masters chose to impose a different will onto this realm. It began with a young man who took pity on me. And over the generations, it became, it became a haven for the lost. Each master had a vision for it. We had a good run, a few good centuries ever since we started, until, as you saw, Clement came along. I wish to know your intentions. This is awfully out of place for me, as prisoner. You are my captor, and I shall obey whatever will may be. Nevertheless, I wish... I wish to have my impertinent uh, question answered, if it, is, uh, if it isn't much. <clears throat> is it your will to carry on with the, masters, with the uh, hotel's mission, to offer sanctuary to those lost and with nowhere to go? I should let you know, before you answer, that I am used to suffering. I've been through a lot worse than what you saw today. If your will is to torture me, like Master Clement did, then you need not pretend. However, you accepted my oath and took me into your service, and now you have treated me with kindness. I would believe, then, that you are not like him. So tell me, is your wish to uphold the hotel's mission to provide respite to those in need? To be honest, if you will, my servitude to you remains regardless of your choice, as I have none myself. for the hotel. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I'm going to blow my nose again. 
as I try to figure this out. <laughs> Always this time of year. I feel like this would be my response. I feel like this wouldn't really cross my mind because I'd just be like, ah, oh, whatever, ancient Greek, you're kind of bound by thing. Uh, but it would be the nice thing to say. Like, Astron seems such like such like a cute lad. I mean, he's kind of like a huge uggo right now. But like, you know. I wish to be a good master to the hotel and to you. Oh, that's so hard to figure out. Yeah, I'll do this one. I don't know what I was getting into when I accepted Clement's deed. A lot has happened in a single day, and I couldn't have imagined any of this from, the, from his rambling. But yes, I intend to uphold the hotel's mission now. I want to be a good master to the hotel and to you. I am not trying to trick you, but what you've told me, I have no reason to. Maybe it's hard for you to believe me right now, but I mean... Astron does not answer at first. Only his, um... Uh, only his, uh, deep breathing cuts the room's silence. It's been so long. I don't know how many years I was locked away. I must admit, the mere thought of, uh, asking gives me chills. Master, can you imagine it? Final turn- Uh, for centuries, I've been tending to- uh, I've been tending to this hotel. It was my mercy- now, what saved me from torture and gave me purpose. It was hard work, and not all masters have been kind over the centuries, but it was wonderful regardless, nevertheless. I enjoyed every moment of it. And then, Master Jean died. I could have, uh, done more to try to stop him. I should have. Then he came, Clement. I am used to pain. I had grown accustomed to having a people, <laughs> a mission, a purpose. Being locked away didn't hurt half as bad as having my guests kicked out. Today you freed me, took me into your service, and now you tell me you wish to be a good master to the hotel and to me? Allow me to speak frankly. I am afraid of you, terribly slow. You are my jailer. Over the centuries, I grew comfortable with enjoying my masters, but after Clement, it's all coming back to me. I am so afraid of what you can do to me and to the hotel. There's, there's no choice but to obey your every command. I am so sorry for saying this. It is profoundly out of place for the Keeper to address the Master in such a way. I suppose that, even if I'm afraid of you, I have lost my fear of and of pain and overstepping boundaries. Of all that said, despite my fear, I find myself wanting to believe you. Asteron gets up from the um, <clears throat> from the sofa and uh, walks up to you. He's clearly uh, tipsy, stumbling about as he approaches. The Minotaur uh, kneels before you. I uh, wish dearly for your words to be true. I am not afraid. <clears throat> I am not uh, afforded choice on whether or not I shall obey you. I am a prisoner. But if you indeed... But if uh, indeed your words are true, if your heart is truly set on being a good master, then I shall follow you. Not out of duty, but out of want. And were I ever allowed true freedom, I would remain by your side. I swore to you, and now I swear to follow you, for as long as your word holds true. He looks up to you, and the room is dark, lit only by moonlight coming through the window, but you can see a glimmer in the minotaur's eye. Hug him. You pull into him. <clears throat> you pull uh, him from his kneeling position into a hug. He is light, barely heavier than a child. 
in your arms is a uh, stiff and cold, but just as uh, just as your hand strokes his back, he um, remains. The gesture of the gesture and rests his muzzle on your shoulder. Uh, he stiffens once, twice, and presses his face into your neck. Thank you, master. He breathes in deeply, as if learning your scent. Night quickly settles. The hotel has no electricity, but you can uh, make do with the candles. Your shadow and Astron slithers on the wall, trembling alongside the flickering flame. The master's quarters are filled with a uh, vel velvety, uh, the velvety sounds of life, breathing, footsteps, furniture creaking under you. From outside, a passerby uh, would see the ruined hotel with a single candle lit window. If he approached, trying to, uh, tr if he perchance tried to explore it, he'd only find unending s hallways of white and black marble, uh, tiles echoing with rustling of his clothes. He could seek out the comfort of this of this candlelit room, but would never find it, locked away as it is behind a doorless wall. Silence drips back over the uh, two of you. More often than not, Asterisk, Astron is uh, turned towards you, following with his gaze. And just when you realize how hungry you are, he summons a humble feast for you. Fruit, cheese, water, even a regular wine bottle. He turns his back to you to set the table. He stumbles a bit, and a few ap uh, apple roll off the, um, the, t the ground. You catch him, giving you a sideways glance. His nostrils flare under his uh, nervous breathing. Astron seized. Uh, his back broaden as he breathed in, and then his shoulders slouch forward with his exhale. He... He gazes uh, back at you, as if trying to say something, and after a few seconds, he returns to, uns to setting the table. His tail flicks behind him, perhaps even with chipperness. When dinner is ready, he presents it to you with a half-smile on his lips. Your candlelit dinner is simple and uneventful. Any offer to have Astron eat alongside you is brushed off with a shake of his hand. It's a long, deliberate mo mo moment. Uh, his single ear <clears throat> whips to and fro beside his, be his, uh, beside his head. You ask him if there's any way to restore the hotel's electricity. Yes, there is. Uh, there is, yes. We must uh, light the hotel's hearth. And for that, we must use a special object. It is a set of bronze mirrors that focus sunlight. Uh, it generates a pure flame. It will bring the entire hotel back to life. Shortly after, uh, with nothing else to do for the night, we both look for uh, both of wait, the both of you find rest in your respective rooms. Hades, Voyage. What happened to, uh, is this still chapter two? What? Whew. We're gonna end the part here, I think. I'll uh I'll see you around everyone. <laughs>